Now, before you go into your group, your um, room, I'm going to give you three minutes to design something. And this is what this exercise is. Hopefully, by the time we finish, and I probably need to hurry up and talk a bit less so that we can do this and get finished in time. Um, what we're going to be doing is designing something for your partner in that room. But before we start, let's get started on it. Um, I want you in three minutes to just design the ideal wallet or purse. Just draw a picture of what you think the ideal wallet or purse will be and what its features will be. Off you go, your time starts now. I'll put on some creative music to help you. You don't have to share this with anybody if you don't want to, just basically have a go. Three, two, one. Okay, how was that? How did that feel? Did feel felt good? Casey's like, yep. Have you nailed it, Casey? Have you done something perfect? Yes, so has Nan. Well done. I reckon there's a whole lot of you who are thinking, no, that was terrible. I didn't know what I was doing. What is an ideal wallet? I haven't even had a chance to think about this and I've got a test already. That is kind of a false start. And it is something that in business we find we're doing often is we go straight to the solution. I need you to design this or create this or to end up with a solution to this problem. And you don't actually have a chance to even really understand what the problem is. By me asking you to design the ideal wallet, you've immediately just sort of got to guess, well, what kind, of, what kind of problems do I have with the wallet I've got already? You're basically using your own experience and your own um, input. Now, I find that really interesting in a way. Sorry, let me bring myself back onto the recording. Um, it is a really typical problem-solving approach. And one of the things we're going to talk about in a design thinking environment is we are actually more interested in problems than we are in solutions, which will feel counterintuitive, particularly to those of you who are just starting out on your MBA journey because you're doing an MBA to solve problems. So you can be a better problem solver. But the best way to solve a problem is to make sure that you're solving the right problem. And so we're going to step back and we're going to shake this up a little bit and approach a very similar task but in a slightly different way. So what I want you to do first and the next page of your um, uh, your worksheet uh, will give you some clues as to this um, but firstly what you're going to do is interview each other. So you've got eight minutes you'll have four minutes each to interview so don't pop into your breakout rooms yet. Let me explain what you need to do. And when I get to the four minute mark, I will just put something into the chat. So those of you who saw when I broadcast, it's time to come back to the room. I'm going to just put in the word swap so that it's time for you to swap wherever you're up to at that stage. So what I want you to be doing at this stage is to try and get to know the person that you've been paired with. So your challenge is not going to be to design the ideal wallet. Your challenge is going to be to design something that is useful and meaningful for your, the person you've been partnered with. Now, for those of you, just for the recording, for those of you who aren't in this class, I want you to do this exercise with a friend. You've got plenty, many of you are locked up in the quite close quarters. Instead of playing Monopoly or Boggle or Scrabble or Mahjong, Let's have a go at doing this exercise instead. And also, for those of you doing it in the room, I think you might find it fun to do something similar with, um, with the people that you're sharing the space with at the moment. So design thinking is also called human-centered design. The most 
important part of the process is empathy or really understanding the person that you're designing for. And so if, we're, if we need to use empathy, then we need to actually achieve empathy. We need to get an understanding of who the person is. And one of the best ways to do that is to have a really, really good, solid conversation. Now, hopefully, um, you and your partner will have your wallet or your purse within close reach. It would be great if you could get that and take it into the interview so that your partner, depending, you can decide who goes first or second. In fact, just to save time, if your name is first on the breakout room list, you go second. And if your name is second on the breakout list, you go first. So the person who is second will be asking questions. The person who is first will be responding and then you're going to swap. Okay. So what I'm asking you to do is start by getting that person, the person you are interviewing, to walk you through the contents of your wallet, of their wallet. Ask them to tell themselves about you by showing them things that are in their wallet. Think about the questions that you can ask to really get to understand them a little bit better. You're going to have plenty of goes at this. So do that. On your worksheet, I suggest that as they're talking, you make notes. You collect the insights as you're watching and learning. All right. So everybody ready for the first four-minute sprint? I'm head off into your um, breakout rooms and get started. <laughs>